partners. It's called the Raymond P. Wilson Association. Okay. We used to be township engineers for <laughs> half the county. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like Highland Park, Edison, Franklin, South Brunswick, East Brunswick, wow. Monroe, <laughs> Cranberry. We had them all. We used to do all, all the work for them in those days. It wasn't too much work then, but you start with the depression. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know, depression, when the depression started, 28. 28. There was, there was nothing built for 10 or 15 years. Nothing was built. Mm -hmm. That was easy work. So. When you were out surveying on your lunch hour, did you sit around or did you go out hunting where you were surveying? <laughs> we did I heard little. stories about these <laughs> arcades <laughs> that you put in. <laughs> we did a little walking around in noon time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two hour lunch, you go hunting for pheasants. Two hour, Bakers were big hunters, I hear. Yeah. 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 Now, where was the best hunting spot? Well, we, they changed. <laughs> One time, they did, this place, <laughs> we used to go to Pennsylvania on, on their season open for pheasants. Mm -hmm. and, and around here, we hunted all over. <laughs> mostly, you, like, you like mostly to hunt pheasants? Yeah, pheasants and quail. Did you use dogs? No, we had dogs. We, we always had bird dogs. <laughs> we still have three out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have a big farm in Pennsylvania too, right? The Baker Farm? Is there a farm up in Pennsylvania? Yeah, my brother Raymond right. has a big mm -hmm. farm in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Mountain. Mm -hmm. the Baker Mountain by the Susquehanna? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the what, yep. Why Lucy? Why Lucy. Yeah. After George retired, we'd go quail out in one day and the race was the next. <laughs> <laughs> That's good living. Yeah. When was the first time you saw deer in New Jersey? Well, the first time I saw a deer, I was 21 years old, and we went to South Jersey hunting and I saw my first deer. When was the first time you saw a deer around here? I think up in the Sand Hills I saw one about 27. 1927? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. There weren't deer in South Brunswick? No. There was no deer in New Jersey. Really? <laughs> there were no deer in New Jersey. They, they didn't start a hunting season. They, they, stocked, they started stocking around 1900, and they didn't have an open season until about 1920. See, now I always thought the deer were here from the Indians. Mm -hmm. They were all gone. Well, they got they, wiped out. You know, they were, oh. there was none around here until about 27 or so. Hmm. Well, but most people don't realize that most animals were wiped out or... Remember jackrabbits? Yeah, me right. jackrabbits. Jackrabbits, they used, to, they used to bring them in from out west. Jackrabbits. Big catch. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big catch. Yeah, jackrabbits. Is that one of your trophies over there? That's my son's. That's your Moose. son's. That's mm -hmm. Moose. Mm -hmm. He has... You want to see his trophies in the other room? <laughs> Oh, you, if you want to share them, I'm sure, because uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Tony sheep. hunts and fishes. Sheep and uh, elk. elk, sheep and elk, and goat. Mm -hmm. And where would you get them? Where would you go to get them? <laughs> they went to British Columbia. About four <coughs> of them, I think, went to my brother Raymond and, and Howe and Clarence Huntley. Clarence Huntley and Trepto, I think. Trepto from Milltown? Yeah, they all went and they That's all came back with a, a goat and a sheep. I think they all got, I think one of them got a bear and Al got a uh, moose. On that trip he had a moose and an elk and a, no, not an elk, a moose and a sheep and a goat. Mm -hmm. and then they used to go to, to Idaho. Elkin. Now, um, would you like to speak about your own children and when they were born and were they born here or and when you met Mrs. Baker? Where did you meet Gwen? Well, <laughs> they used to have a, a school 
You know, they had a one-room school right here. Mm -hmm. One-room school, and she taught there until it finished. One-room school, and then after that, they turned it into a community house. And we used to have dances there about a week or so in the winter. And I met her there, I guess. <laughs> And what was her maiden name? Wendlin Lawrence Brown mm -hmm. Baker. <laughs> Wendlin Lawrence Brown Baker. She taught you, didn't she, Frank? Yeah, she taught me. She was my teacher. Yeah, I thought that <laughs> when we interviewed you the other day, you were telling us, yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, one room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had all eight classes there. Eight classes? Yeah. Wow. Eight through eight. I remember the, one of the last classes was Dick Clayton. Dick Clayton, Lester Forge, and some girls, the three of them graduated. <laughs> they graduated. That was a graduating class, yeah. Now, where was she educated? Right here. Mm -hmm. She go to normal school, did they call no, it? No, she went to Women's College. Oh, for Douglas. Year. Douglas. Douglas. Yeah, she went there for a couple years. New Jersey. College for Women. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they call it now. Douglas. Douglas. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was 20, she went until 23, I think it was. I and don't the remember first, you. The first me. full class to graduate graduated in 24. Whatever that first year is, she never graduated. She got her teaching certificate. <laughs> She went with Frida Dryling. Yeah. And uh, what was that young lady from? Emily, was it Emily Post? Yeah, sister? Emily Post. Yeah. yeah, there was a whole crowd of them. Yeah, that yeah. She, they used to be, come here if we were married. They, our classmates would come here about once a year or so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're all gone now, I guess. Very beautiful lady. Yes, she was. <laughs> she spent a year in. San Francisco, and she was teaching in one of those oh, special classes. The settlement, the settlement house. Settlement house. Yeah. After she graduated from school, she took uh, letters of introduction from relatives here, the new people out there, and she traveled out west, and went to the Grand Canyon. We have all sorts of pictures of her. You know, she took the train and whatever way she could wow. to get out there. That's amazing. And then once she reached California, she taught there for a year in what they call a settlement house, which was set up for ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. And they would bring their children in and she would teach them, you know, basic hygiene and language and teach them basic mathematics so that they could start out a new life here in the United States. It was the same section where Joe DiMaggio was brought up. And mm. I don't know whether he was there or not, but he could have been. Mm -hmm. It was that, in that same section where he grew up, Joe DiMaggio. Mm -hmm. and she eventually came back this way to teach. Yeah. And, and her family was from here. Uh, her her uh, great grandfather was the original owner of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, he purchased the house, well, the actual construction of the and somewhere around 1870 or just before that, he purchased the house at auction. His original <coughs> owner, Jake, Jacob B. Tolman. Yeah. He was the. He was the starter. That was the starter of the family here. This Tolman, was his. This tall, was, tall man. Jacob. This was his summer house, which lasted one year, and then he moved down permanently. And he was from New York, probably, or New Philadelphia? York. He was a big real estate man in New York. Mm -hmm. He had vast holdings over there. <laughs> we wish we still had some of the land on Broadway and, you know, Fifth and yeah, quite a bit yeah. up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he had the place here. Yeah, I remember uh, his, uh, his daughter, Maybe. Mariah Coley Brown, yeah. she talked about. This is of 88. He was living here then, and she was here, I guess. And he said, he had his man used to take him to town. He'd take town, take the 
train to New York every day. So I guess we won't go today, John. Blizzard <laughs> <laughs> of 88. Now, would they go to Monmouth Junction for the train, or no, were they, they able to, to get to Jamesburg. Jamesburg? They went to Jamesburg and got the train. Mm -hmm. He was one of the original commuters in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we all drive in an hour. He used to take a couple hours to take the train and the ferry and to get into the city. Yeah. Do you do you remember the Mayhams from Monmouth Junction? No. Because they were they were like residents here that, that were exporters in New York. They used to commute, and I just thought maybe no, I don't remember them. maybe they were friends or something. Yeah. But the house originally belonged to Jacob B. Mm -hmm. And uh, his daughter passed away early in life and left two children, her and her husband. They left the two orphans, mm -hmm. which was Mariah. Uh, and that was George's wife's mother. Mm -hmm. I see. And when she reached her majority, or reached of age to inherit the house, then um, she and Grandpa Brown moved into the house. Yeah, about 1900. 1900 they, they moved here. Coach Gwendolyn was born in 01. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, oh, 01. Well, they, they were here from 1900 uh, till they died in, I don't know, 56? 54. Yeah. 50, 54, 55, 56, somewhere in there. Both mom and dad? Yeah. A month Grandpa. apart. Mm -hmm. uh, they Grandpa. died a month apart. A yeah. month apart. And yeah, Grandpa died first and then... No, she, she, she died. died first. Yeah, she yeah. died okay. first. She died first and he died. Do you remember what they died of? Well, he, 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 he had cancer and he had a liver problem. Okay. He had a liver, bad liver. But they used to have fun here. Oh, yes. And Didn't Grandpa Brown have a station, gas station or something across yeah, the street? Yes, he had a station across the road, yes. On the Bankhead Corner. Right on the corner. The north, northeast corner? Well, on Buster's side. Now, on these Buster's are the, side? We're yeah. speaking of the Browns now. The Browns. The Browns. Gwen's, Brown. Gwen's, Gwen's parents. Gwen's parents, Mariah and Herbert, they had uh, a little store, yeah, gas station, yeah, over on Buster's Corner. Yeah, Buster's Corner. Okay, that's the southwest corner. Okay, now that is your brother-in-law. Yeah. Buster is your brother-in-law. Yes. And he lives right opposite you on he the south. He lives across the street. Yeah. On the South he, Brunswick side. He's 92. Okay. Mm. <laughs> that's Courtney. Courtney Brown. Courtney P. Brown. Courtney Senior. Brown. There's Senior. Three, there's three Courtney P. Browns. P is for Parmley. That's an old family name. Parmley. P-A-R? P-A-L-M-E-R? Parmley. No, there's an R in there, so P-A-R. P-A-R? L. M-E-R. Parmley. His mom was a Palmer. No. No. Dr. Par Parmley E. Brown. That yeah. was Grandpa Brown's brother. Brother. He yeah. was a famous dentist. No, yeah. that was his. That his, his father was a famous dentist. His father was the famous. Yeah. <laughs> and they started the uh, Baltimore College, the Baltimore Dental College. It was like that year of men were him and his co-partners and stuff. It was the early 1800s? Yeah. They, they were the ones that originally set up the Baltimore Dental School and the New York one. Mm -hmm. And that's where dentistry went from the barber shop into a dental office. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the instruments and stuff they designed, our dentists still use. It's just from being a hand-operated or belt-driven mm -hmm. uh, power source for now it's now into the air pressure and electric and stuff mm -hmm. but it's basically the same instruments mm. you know and baking soda that was baking soda powder tooth mm -hmm. powder that they first came out with that we were evolved back to now. Yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. with a little peroxide <laughs> i use it every, little peroxide. every day and every night mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so a lot of the stuff that they discovered 
back yeah. at the turn of the century. You know, we've evolved and found out it's it's a real thing, what we should be using. Yeah. Now, um, you said you would like to speak about Courtney Brown's history or just well, some I, things? Well, I, I think you, you sh if you want to get a hold of his son. Okay. But I don't remember all the stuff. But his son lives right next door. And, and he, but he was in the invasion of Africa, infantry colonel. And that was over. He came back. And then he went over and in the, in the, he had three into Europe. He was in both of them. Yeah. He was in the invasion of Normandy. Invasion of Normandy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's got lots of good stories. Is he's he traveled all over and was a colonel, knew all the generals. Yeah. You know, they all knew him firsthand. He was mm. you know, <laughs> he, he was a very respected he individual. He was ninety two. Yeah. In fact he was just awarded uh, something the, the I Medal saw, of Liberty or something mm. from the French government for his participation in liberating uh, the French. Yeah, he always tells a story about uh, how he came into this one uh, town and they had been trapped in this town a little bit further over and uh, the artillery coming in was both from the French and, you know, the U.S. and mm -hmm. uh, Allied. Mm -hmm. And they were stuck in the middle of this town with it coming from both directions and they had <laughs> a hard time getting it. You know, the phone's working because you had to run a string. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. Hard wire. Almost, right. yeah, the hard wire. And they finally got them to stop shooting at them. <laughs> but he lost quite a bit of men mm -hmm. at that time because, you know, of the fire coming from both directions. Sure. And it was a very long drawn out thing. He, he got some medals for mm -hmm. heroism and so forth because he did save quite a few of his men by, you know, crawling through the line to get this wire out and so forth. But um, the town, before they left the town, the guy gave him a bottle of liquor. It was, you know, that was a rarity. Mm -hmm. You know, it was dug up from below the cellar, below oh, the cellar, yeah. below the yeah. cellar. French wine. Where they had it hidden. Mm -hmm. And uh, they gave him this bottle. He rolled it up in his bedroll. And um, he took it, you know, back to this town where they were supposed to get some relief and get his wounded men men fixed and everything. So he pulls into this town and there were men everywhere. There wasn't a place to sleep. You know, and he just finally walked into this one place and he said, if I could unroll this bedroll, I could have a drink of this whatever it was. And with that, the water parted and there was plenty of room on the floor for <laughs> his bedroll so he could get that bottle. They were going to share that there. bottle. They were, they were willing to move to share that bottle. <laughs> but, uh, they, those were some of the, you know, the things like our kids, they don't see war firsthand. No. Mm -hmm. Our play, our children, you know, the invasions and wars that they're in, they play it at a distance. You know, it's not a reality. With these men, it was blood and guts right there in the trenches, mm -hmm. mud mm -hmm. up to their knees. The infantrymen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they talk about the pup tents. The pup tents were only big enough for a body with little airspace. You know, our kids, they know dome tents and stuff, and this heavy... Would he be involved in World War One also? No. No, 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 no. not much. My brother, yeah. Bill, was in World War One. He was. Yeah, mm -hmm. he yeah. was in World War One. I know uh, my aunt lost, lost a husband in World War One. Yeah. Uh, We've had men from our families fight in every war. That's... <laughs> What was the one in Texas? Yeah. Uh, huh? What was the one down south? <laughs> no, it ain't me. Uh, uh, Texas. Um, no. Prince George had how yeah. many children? How many kids did we have? Did you have? <laughs> uh, two, two children. George Hal Baker and Dennis Marie Byrne. Now. Yeah. Janet. Janice. Janice. Right. Marie. Marie. Derek, we're filming in here. Sure. Okay. 
Good morning. Another generation? <laughs> yes, this is my oldest son, Derek Powell. Uh, He's Derek? 21. Mm -hmm. He's going off to work. I'll be leaving shortly. Okay. Get breakfast. Uh oh. <laughs> but, uh, how old is Howe now? He's 62. He was 62, he had his last birthday. Yeah, 1935. Yeah. Born in 35. Yeah. And he was 62 this year, yeah. February. Got married 70. in 85. Mm -hmm. He was born 35. To Susan. Okay. And, and first wife. He waited 50 years for the best to come along. Uh huh. Okay, and Janice Marie? Byrne. Byrne. Does she have children? 